Good evening, everyone. It's me, Dr. Plague. We talk a lot about horror on this channel, but the real horror out there is how easy it is for your data to fall in the hands of disreputable people. That's why today's video is sponsored by Aura. While you're enjoying today's spooky video, data brokers, those things that go bump on the web, could already be selling your information to scanners, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, your health records, your relatives, they could all be out there. That's why I've been using Aura. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests just for me. It was simple to use and very intuitive, and I had barely gotten out of the setup process, and it was already blocking over 20 data broker requests on my behalf. Aura protects your passwords, your banking information, everything you need for day-to-day -day online life. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use my information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, other sensitive information, things like a certain YouTube channel that you all enjoy listening to so much. Aura also does much more to protect me and my family from online threats, the kind you can't see. It comes with other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download several different apps. It really is just that easy to set up. And best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. I hear you saying, but Dr. Plague, I have one or two of these tools already. But, dear readers, not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Readers of my fine tales can tell you why that never ends well. Aura is always on, doing the hard work of keeping me safe so I can focus on other tasks like finishing my latest book or uploading my most recent video. I value my privacy, and I know you value yours. You can go to Aura.com, that's A-U-R-A dot com, to start your two-week free trial. You can also check out the link below and start your free trial with Aura. So why not give Aura a try and protect yourself from the real monsters out there? Waking up in the cozy lodge on Mount Laurinite, I eagerly embraced a day of skiing. The slopes offered a thrilling adventure, with powdery snow and stunning vistas. After a lively day on the mountain, I joined fellow skiers at the lodge cafe, sharing stories by the fireplace. Exploring the lodge's amenities revealed a spa and a charming library. The evening brought a gourmet dinner, and I ended the day stargazing on the deck. The perfect blend of adventure and relaxation made my first day on Mount Laurinite unforgettable. As night fell on the lodge, an eerie symphony of crashing trees and inhuman screeches filled the air. The lodge's deck offered a haunting view of the turmoil in the forest, with unsettling sounds emanating from a nearly seven-foot cliff face. Inside, guests exchanged uneasy glances, seeking refuge in the lodge's warmth. The staff reassured us, attributing the unsettling noises to natural forces. Despite the mysterious backdrop, the lodge maintained its comfortable ambience. As I settled into my room, the unsettling sounds persisted, creating a restless atmosphere. The night at the lodge unfolded as a surreal blend of awe and unease, leaving unanswered questions lingering in the mountain air. In the dim moonlight on the lodge's deck, the unsettling symphony of sounds reached a chilling climax. Intrigued by the mysterious commotion, a cacophony peering into the night. Suddenly a grotesque creature emerged from the shadows, its form illuminated in the moon's eerie glow. The creature stood tall, its silhouette a nightmarish amalgamation of sinew, limbs, and gnarled features. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly intensity, capturing the darkness within its twisted form. Jagged spines adorned its back, casting ominous shadows as it moved. 
The creature noticed me on the balcony, its screech intensifying, sending shivers down my spine. The sound was a blend of anguish and malevolence, echoing through the mountainous terrain. The creature's movements were unsettlingly agile, each step accompanied by a disturbing contortion of its twisted anatomy. Its skin, if one could call it that, appeared mottled and scarred, revealing a history of unknown horrors. The creature's elongated limbs terminated in claws that seemed capable of tearing through anything in its path. The air was thick with an acrid scent as the creature approached, revealing its predatory intent. Frozen in terror, I watched as the creature locked eyes with me, its gaze penetrating the veil between reality and nightmare. The balcony became a stage for a macabre dance, the creature's screeches and my pounding heart forming an eerie duet. As the night unfolded, the lodge's once comforting ambience transformed into an unsettling refuge. The creature's presence lingered in the shadows, leaving an indelible mark on the night at Mount Laurenite's Lodge. The symphony of the mountain had taken a dark turn, and the creature's haunting visage remained etched in my memory. The grotesque creature, its form twisted and nightmarish, abruptly broke into a demonic sprint towards me on the balcony. Its movements were a blur as it closed the distance with terrifying speed. Panic surged through me as the creature, fueled by an unknown malevolence, slammed its full weight into the cabin door, shaking the structure with each furious impact. The door strained under the relentless assault, groaning as if resisting the intrusion of forces beyond comprehension. Fear clenched my chest as I braced against the balcony railing, the creature's screeches now replaced by the thunderous crashes against the door. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, the cacophony ceased, a haunting silence enveloping the lodge, leaving only the echoing resonance of the creature's last impact against the door. Uncertainty hung in the air, as I continually surveyed the surroundings. Just as a false sense of relief settled in, a chilling tapping commenced. It was rhythmic and deliberate, echoing from every window of the lodge. The creature, it seemed, had shifted its focus to finding another entry point. The taps were like morbid percussion, creating a suspenseful symphony of dread. Each tap felt like a sinister whisper, the creature methodically exploring every inch of the lodge in its pursuit. Shadows danced across the windows as it sought a vulnerability to exploit. The once welcoming lodge now felt like a fortress under siege, its very foundations tested by an otherworldly force. The tapping crescendoed into a nerve-wracking rhythm, intensifying the suspense. I stood paralyzed, caught in the heart of the pounding climax of the surreal encounter. The night at Mount Laurenite Lodge had evolved into a harrowing struggle, with the creature's relentless pursuit echoing in the haunting symphony of the mountain's mysteries. As the creature relentlessly battered against the cabin door. A haunting familiarity swept over me, transporting my thoughts to a chilling incident from my past. Years ago, I had been caught in a fierce current while swimming too close to a dam. The force was relentless, pulling me under with an unforgiving grip. In those harrowing moments, I felt the icy embrace of imminent doom the realization sinking in that there was nothing I could do but wait for the inevitable. Miraculously, I had managed to break free, just before the current dragged me into the dam's abyss. The brush with my 
impending morality left an indelible mark, a visceral understanding of the helplessness that arises when confronted by forces beyond control. It was a moment when the fight-or-flight response faltered and the stark reality of one's vulnerability took center stage. Now, on the lodge's balcony, as the grotesque creature relentlessly tried to find a way in with brute force, that same sense of impending doom resurfaced. The cabin, my supposed refuge, felt like a sinking vessel in a stormy sea, each impact of the creature's assault echoing the relentless pull of that dam's current. Helplessly gripping the balcony rail, the feeling of impending doom intensified. The creature's unrelenting determination mirrored the inexorable force of that damn current. Fight or flight, both were futile, and the cold grip of vulnerability settled in, much like that moment when I was caught in the merciless current. As the creature abruptly fell silent, the lodge became a crucible of anticipation. The tapping on the windows, reminiscent of that fateful current's pull, evoked a chilling deja vu. In those suspenseful seconds, I stood paralyzed, entwined with the echoes of past helplessness, bracing for the unknown as the creature sought entry. The night at Mount Lorenite Lodge had become a surreal tapestry where past and present converged in a symphony of vulnerability and dread. A split-second decision made me jump from the balcony as I bolted for my skis. The creature realized what I had done and screeched after me. As I descended the mountain, the enraged creature pursued me with relentless fury. Its mutated form oozed grotesque tendrils, and its elongated limbs resembled twisted vines. The once molten eyes now glowed with a sickly radiance, casting a hunting glow across the night. Navigating the treacherous trails and hurtling over snow-covered crevices, the creature closed in with ghastly speed. Each step it took left a trail of mutated, ooze-like substance in the snow, painting a nightmarish picture of its relentless pursuit. Realizing the imminent danger, I accelerated towards the cliff's edge. The creature's screeches intensified, echoing through the mountainous landscape as it closed the gap. Just as its razor-sharp claws slashed at my calf, I slammed my ski poles into the ground with a desperate force. The abrupt stop sent me hurtling forward, my legs dangling over the edge. The creature, unable to halt its momentum, barreled off the cliff with a gut-wrenching screech. Time seemed to slow as the night air filled with the grotesque symphony of the creature's demise. The fall was a descent into a nightmarish finality. The creature, impaled on a shard of rock at the cliff's base, writhed in agony. Its tendrils flailed wildly, leaving a gruesome trail of mutated substance in the snow. The screeches, now distorted and gurgling, filled the air until the mountain fell silent once more. As I caught my breath, the eerie glow from the creature's eyes dimmed, and the mountain embraced a tranquil stillness. A gory tableau at the cliff's base stood as a testament to the night's surreal horror. The once vibrant trail and snow-covered crevice bore witness to the harrowing chase, concluding in the chilling silence that followed the creature's final gory descent into oblivion. Limping back to the lodge, my adrenaline-fueled escape left me in desperate need of medical attention. The once cozy refuge had transformed into a scene of chaos, marked by the aftermath of the creature's rampage. Lodge staff, shaken and bewildered, rushed to assist me, offering the care I desperately needed. 
As dawn painted the horizon with hues of orange and pink, a surreal turn of events unfolded. Armored vehicles rolled up to the lodge, each marked with the insignia of a black hawk clutching a globe. Men in tactical gear disembarked, a formidable presence against the serene mountain backdrop. The air buzzed with an air of secrecy as they approached, their movements precise and purposeful. They presented a non-disclosure agreement, demanding my signature in exchange for their intervention and aid. The document bore the acronym CSO and showcased a logo depicting a black hawk gripping the earth in its talons. The clandestine nature of the encounter unfolded as I signed the NDA, sealing my silence against the night's bizarre events. The men, presumably from the covert organization represented on the paper, efficiently coordinated with Lodge staff. They examined the aftermath, collecting samples and analyzing the mutated residue left by the creature. Their movements spoke of a well-practiced routine, as if such incidents were not as uncommon as one might believe. As the sun emerged, the armored vehicles departed as swiftly as they had arrived, leaving the lodge in an eerie calm. The mountain, now bathed in the warm glow of morning, seemed to conceal the secrets of the night before. The events of that harrowing night remained a closely guarded secret, locked behind the signed NDAs and the enigmatic logo of the CSO. The lodge, once a sanctuary, now bore witness to the convergence of natural mystery and clandestine operations taken out by an organization that navigates the thin line between reality and the supernatural. The drive down the mountain was a journey through the aftermath of a surreal night. The peacefulness of the wilderness road provided a stark contrast to the chaos that had unfolded only hours earlier. The first light of dawn painted the snow-covered landscape in a soft glow, casting an ethereal aura over the mountain. However, as the roads neared the cliff base, where the creature met its grisly demise, a profound unease settled in. The armored vehicles had left no trace, but the spot where the creature had landed was frozen in time. The mutated residue, a grotesque testament to the creature's violent end, marred the pristine snow. Its visage and the ooze had left an indelible mark, a chilling reminder of the unearthly encounter. A shiver ran down my spine as the road offered a close-up view of the remnants. The creature, once a nightmarish force, was no longer present, yet its essence lingered in the eerie silence. The frozen imprints and shadows in the snow hinted at a grotesque finality that had transpired just hours earlier. Caught in the grip of an uncanny chill, I noticed the creature's shadow seemingly slinking into the woods of Mount Laurinite. Dismissing it as a trick of the mind, I continued the descent, my gaze fixed on the road ahead. The rational part of my mind attributed the fleeting image to fatigue and the lingering effects of a night filled with horror and creatures of myth. As I drove away from the mountain's embrace, the rising sun painted the sky in hues of orange and gold. The tranquility of the morning seemed to wash away the night's ordeal. The creature, the CSO, the enigmatic events of Mount Laurinite faded into the rearview mirror, leaving behind a lingering sense of mystery and the profound realization that some secrets are best left undisturbed in the shadows of the unknown. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, 
then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to Siv Garstead and Unicorn Hollow for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J, Sue Casper, and Valinator for being our spooky skeleton tier contributors. And thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zeronin, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, Sarah SMR42, Grim Reaper, and Tomboy Top Uwu for being our Ghostly Reader tier contributors. And a special thanks to Grim Reaper, who appears to have subscribed not just on YouTube, but also on my Patreon. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you, and your support is always appreciated. If you'd like to support the channel, then come on down to Patreon, or become a member on YouTube. Spooky Skeleton tier contributors, that's our $5 tier, get their spooky 12 hours early, at 8.30 a.m., as opposed to 8.30 p.m., my time, of course. And while Ghostly Reading is uh, only a tier that's available on Patreon, you get a signed copy of my book anytime I write one on your doorstep in, hopefully, a timely manner. If you'd like a book, we have many on Amazon. I've got links below if you'd like to follow those. Um, should get you to my page so you can buy any one of my eight books I believe we're up to now. I'm sure they'd look really nice on your shelf, and I'll sign them for you if you can find me out in the wild. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.